Hey, it was hot as all get out when I was landed last night at 10 o'clock. Here? Yeah. Why are I, you staying I, up till 10 o'clock? Well, hey, flight. Oh, my friend saw you in the airport again. Was he singing? No, I no. said if he does anything weird, please oh, video no. it and no. send it. Same saying. friend? Which airport? Same friend. I was, huh? I was Monroe. Oh. Oh, Monroe, whatever it is. Did you fly commercial? Yeah. You yeah. went to North Dakota? Yep. South Dakota? Or North South Dakota. Dakota. Oh, South Dakota. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and then went to Emory for a pheasant hunt. Did you kill any pheasants? I killed eight. I killed my limit both days. There you go. Three one day and four the next. What? Did you shoot your 28 gauge? Nope, 20 gauge. A, 20 kid, gauge. a kid from up there lent, lent me his 20 gauge. Okay. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. I had a blast. Did you wear all the garb? Oh, yeah. You like got to wear the orange. Did you bring any, <laughs> like any big, birds uh, back I look like us? a big pumpkin. Because I was sitting down on a chair. I was the blocker. <laughs> <laughs> you were the, you the got, blocker? You got beaters. You got the dogs, and then you got the shotgunners with the beaters and the dogs. And then you got blockers. Then you got blockers, and me and Undertaker were a blocker. The Undertaker, Wait, the, the real Undertaker? No, no, yeah. He's a cool dude. Not the guy we play poker with. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the real deal. <laughs> the about, Undertaker. About so it took hours. you a minute and a half into that story to mention that you went pheasant hunting with the Undertaker? With the Undertaker. That's a travesty. He, I'd have led no, no. with that. Oh, no, yeah. no. He's a cool dude, too. Then I played poker with him. What? And, uh, no, no, yeah. Why am I just now hearing all this? No, no, but hey, you gotta, you, hey you'll you love this. All right. Yo, know, I get busted out. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. Oh, God. Anyway, the Undertaker's sitting right next to me on the right. Well, he picks up 6'4". And I said. Martin. I said, hey, we've got a name for that. And I said, you need to play it. <laughs> I said, You're looking at his car? No, no, yeah. He's yeah. busted out. Yeah, he Johnny busted D. out. So I'm helping him out, and I said, hey, it's called the Martin. And I said, look, you just you should shove it all in right now. And I he did because, it. No, no. I said, because, hey, it's a winner. Well, he, he, you know, he, right. no, they was betting and betting big and all that. And the flop come out, I think, a queen seven, five, or no, five, three. Uh-oh, open-ended. Yeah, you know. So I'm looking at, you know, and. Some guy bets all. He bets like eight hundred. You know, so the undertaker dollars folds. tournament. He folds. Tournament. You know, he folds, and I said, "Bad fold, big man." I said, "Bad fold." I said, "Hey, just for giggles, go ahead and show the last card." He did seven straight. Seven, you told that five, man right three. there. I told that man. Like, yeah, I wouldn't have told the Undertaker about it. Yeah, Cy, was he a pretty cool guy? Oh no, yeah. Oh, he's great, and he's a good shotgunner. Does he go by Mr. Oh, hat, Undertaker? Hat man didn't miss nothing. What's his real name? Mark something. Did you call him Mark or Mr. Undertaker? Uh, I sir. Call big, I call him Big Man. <laughs> With Big Man, sir. How how tall is he? Uh, about 6'11", maybe 7 foot. And weighs about 350. Really? And it ain't no it ain't no fat on it. Okay. Were you nervous or a little uh, bit scared? No. He's 6'10", no, he's, he's a cool guy. He's what? How, how tall? 6'10", 309. Oh, oh 309. Did he tombstone you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he dropped you on his oh, head. Oh, no, 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 no. When you looked at you, you just <laughs> <laughs> got a little nervous. Yeah. No, he's a real cool dude. He really is. <laughs> the Undertaker. He, matter of fact, we're going to try to get him to come hunting with us. Duck hunting? Duck hunting and deer hunting. Oh, he ain't going to fit in none of Phil's blinds. Huh? You're going to have to build a new blind for him. Oh, no, he ain't going to fit none of them no. things Phil got. Yeah, well, I don't even know if they make weather to fit him. Oh, he don't need none. <laughs> about as tough as he is. Probably He's not. an undertaker. He yeah. don't need, <laughs> he don't need a waiter. Right. He don't need no waiters. Yeah. You played poker and went hunting with the undertaker. With the undertaker. And, and that's that, not and, what you led and, the story Yeah, that was with. not his main story. Well, no way. That's yeah. wild. No, no, it was wild. And like I said, he's, he's a part of all of our childhood. Whenever, oh yeah, that <laughs> moment in life when you believe wrestling is real. Oh no, wait a minute. You know? Wait, what? Oh no, no, don't. <laughs> yes, oh, no. Uh, hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I remember the day I come in on leave, and they had been watching somebody, Phil and Jace and all of them. And they they was into into it, you know. Jace was telling me, but oh, yeah, it's it's real. And I said, Jace, I said, I, I hate to brush your bubble. I said, but I said, let's. I said, I'll give you an example. I said, I'll get on the the top of Phil's porch, back porch, and I said, you lay down out, out there in the dirt, and I'm gonna jump and I'm gonna land with my knee in your chest. <laughs> and I said, there's two things. One of two things gonna happen. I would like to watch that. 
<laughs> We're going to either Currently. bury you or you're going to the hospital for emergency surgery to save your life. I said, you're not going to get up and then beat me after I land with my, with my knee in your chest. That's the, called the atomic knee, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There but you go. Hey, they believed it. But we all go through that phase in our life oh, where yeah. you believe it's real. Hey, Then you oh, realize no. it's the greatest yeah. soap opera ever. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely. They are the greatest, I'm learning a lot of stuff right now. It's not They real. are the greatest stuntmen in the world. Yep. The core. Okay, because if, if they wasn't, they'd be hurt, seriously hurt. Okay. Did you ask him about any injuries? No. I'd have had no. to ask him a lot. Oh, I would too. No. We got to get him on the show. Yeah, get him hunting. And get him over here, son. Oh, no. In the room. No, no. And then you can hit that gong one time like he used to walk out to. Dong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Of course, so we're going to we gonna have to get a bigger door hey, if hey. the measurements are right. I had <laughs> a bigger gong. You got to yeah. watch it when a man comes in with a horse drawn, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Carriage. Yeah. He rode yeah. up on a horse? No, he drives in on the on on the you know the casket holder. Oh wagon. You know? When he was wrestling. I thought oh, you yeah. just said he rode up on a horse to South Dakota. <laughs> no. like, he may have. That's a Clydesdale. Hey, he'd, hey, he'd have come in carrying the horse. <laughs> Not riding him. Okay, he'd have him on his shoulder. Yeah. You know, throw him in the ring. Mm. I did get to meet Junkyard <laughs> Dog back in the day. What that was, do for he you? was he was awesome. No, I can't wait to till he comes here and then Sage you know, meet him. Is yeah. she a wrestling fan? Oh, yeah. Yes, oh. They, she knows them all. Ric Flair, you know, the Undertaker. All oh, she old wrestling. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah the, she likes the old guy. The Ric Flair walk. Yeah. yeah now, now Ric Flair, were you yeah. doing infomercial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he, you know, Mark, After 37 years of research and development and wrestling, let me tell you what works. Go to Auto me. General. Oh, no. No, no, he just was inducted <laughs> into the Hall of Fame, too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. He's yeah. the Undertaker. Yeah. Well, of course he is. Undertaker. That is awesome. That, yeah. That he, he's, a, he's a fantastic dude. He really is. Was his hand just enormous? Oh, no. Did he roll his eyes in the back of his head when he shot? No. Like, yeah. No. Dang. No. Man, I'd have. Yeah, I couldn't have oh, done that. Yeah. I'd have been that guy. It, it was a lot of, it was Hello, a lot Mr. Of Undertaker, sir. Can you do this? Well, can we take a picture and you put your arm around me? Yeah, can you can you like pick me up like you're about to drop me on well, my no, head no, like that you used would to be do all awesome. those? Hey, when we sat down at the poker table, I said, guys, just to let y'all know, I said, hey, if y'all give me any any crap, I said, this man here's my security. He'll take care of the little problem. Oh, big man. Oh, I big said, man. I said, big, big man. He'll take care of the problem. Big He's man. Only six ten. And he said, you got it, buddy. <laughs> mm. I said, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh well, let's take our first break. We'll be back right after uh, this. Martin, you're back in the office. I am back. Welcome in the back. Office. back after being out on a little maternity. I don't know what you had some kids, so you took some time <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> did you have any problems arise? No, I didn't. Work but you wise? know what? If I would have, what would you have done? I could have hit up a trusty folks over at Bambi. They could have handled any go. situation for there me. There you go. Right from home on hey, any HR solution, that. whether it's Cy running naked through the halls again. Yep. Whether it's that was a rough day. Yeah. I mean, Whoa, rough, baby. rough day. That was a rough week. But hey, um, I thought it was a grand week. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It's all about freedom, baby. You, you and never that's know what you're going to have. We got a dedicated HR <laughs> yeah, manager. Yeah, that's, hey, that's right. exactly right. But look. No matter what happens, no matter what kind of business you're running, your employees, your team can always put you in some weird set of circumstances. Look, the folks over at Bambi can help you not have to worry about that. They can do everything for you. With Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They're available by phone, email, or real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. And look, isn't it a relief this day and age to talk to somebody based in the United States? Absolutely. If you have a problem, when you call your Bambi HR rep, it is a person based out of the United States. You can communicate clearly with easily, and you know that you're going to get your stuff done, giving you plenty of access to HR expertise and the personal touch that we all desire. The HR managers can cost as much as 80 grand a year. Small businesses this day and age, mm. you got to save every dollar you can. If you can save the 80 grand and put it into $99 a month, who wouldn't do that? Schedule your free conversation today to see just how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Duck Call Room under podcast. When you sign up, it will really help our show spelled b-a-m-b-e-e dot com bambi dot com and type in duck call room 
I just got a notification that there was a... Uh-oh. What were you notified of? That there's a Black Panther? No, that there was movement at the oh. crib. Movement. At the crib? Literally. There was movement at the crib or in the crib? That's what the I'm actual, trying to say. Is it a Black yeah. Panther? Yeah, no, right. it looks like two young humans. <laughs> Look like two wild animals. They're waking up. I was trying to figure out which it's one. It's the old was... Martin boy. Them old <laughs> Martin boys. I was trying to figure out which one was causing their mama grief since today's my first day back in the office. That's How it. is well, it right. back? Both You're back them. at work now. Yeah. It's... I was the first day. I'll take it. Okay, he'll take it, boys. He said. <laughs> you went I mean, hunt, Did you go hunting this weekend? You said you were going. I to. went Friday. Did you, I didn't see a deer. Did you take a nap? Nope. No? I was awake the whole time. You was awake the whole time. Trail cameras, didn't see a deer. Trying to find a black cat for Sai. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you? No. Yeah, I'm going to have to buy me some more trail cams. Oh, God. I'm serious. For yeah. what? Where are you going to put I them? I figured out. I figured out, okay, the reason nobody believes in the Black Panthers mm -hmm. is because they are not publicized or notarized. He's going to take them. So I'm going to publicize them. I'm going to notarize them. You're going to take them to a notary? Uh, He's, no. I can tell you what he's going to do. I, I know some, so I'm going to make sure everybody else knows. He's going to put too. the camera on the ground. Hey. He's going to walk out there about 10 yards and put a pile of food for sweet pea. No. <laughs> and that cat's so big and so fat, no. you're going to think it's a 100 no. pound cat. No. Because <laughs> it's already a 60 pound. <sighs> Trick photography. All right. Well, you know how in the emails I get Black Panther pictures. And it's always the same, like three. Same pictures. one. Yeah. Yeah. Same three. Pictures. I got a new one. Uh oh, oh that's a new uh -oh. one, boys. Lincoln. From Central Missouri. Mm. Oh, that's in the... Uh, he sent this in. Uh, that was a white tail there. That's a deer. Okay. That's, that's a deer. deer. Obviously. But then... That's hey, a white tail. What? This is what was chasing the deer. Ooh. Oh, he said this? I mean... <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> Things a foot tall. Come on. What? That black lab. That's... <laughs> what do you mean? The tail... Stop hitting me. Don't even... It's a black lab. Hit him again, Cy. Si. Lincoln now, said this. Now, un unlike Cy, si, I do think that is a cat. It does look like uh, a cat. But I think it's a house cat. No, I mean, it ain't. That's a black lab. A young one. <laughs> that's all the zoom you got, John That's Dale? all I got. Oh. Link, this is all Lincoln's Hey, it's in. a black lab. A <laughs> young it, one. Where do you see dogs? It's a small in? animal. It's I, not a big animal. It's a, what, I, what if it's a young black panther? No. Just like Cy. Si. No. Baby no. Black Panthers always check yeah, out hey, the house out babies, boys. Si's hey, not hey. going to validate this oh, one. Hey. That's because he thinks it's a dog. It is a dog. It's a young black lab. Si, you call it like you see it. I, well, hey, I that. don't see a lot of canine in that. Oh, no, I do. Legs. The tail looks legs like a cat. Legs and yeah, the head. Right. Legs and the head. What about the tail? Huh. I ain't worried about the tail. Oh. <laughs> That's what you That's bring up every dog. time. Spoken, spoken, dog. spoken like every bobcat believer there right. ever was. Right. I, I ain't worried about that too. This is what everybody says right. about Cy when he says this, he saw a Black Panther. No. Oh. Man, I got excited when I got this email from right. Lincoln. No, that's a fraud. It's a black lab, a young one. Well, there you have it. There you right. go, Lincoln. You heard it here first, boys. There you go, Lincoln. It's <laughs> fraud. Very, very clearly Fake. a dog. <laughs> well, no, the one I seen the other day down there was bigger than that one. Well, I would hope so. Oh, what did you see that? Big. The one you saw with Stone? This is a new yeah. sighting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Stone had, you know, Stone was telling me, I said, well, what did you see? I said, let me tell you what I saw first. Yeah, we went up at the lair by the time we, you know, I get out and I say, okay, yes, yeah, about, you know, where I got my wallet in my front pocket. That's how by, how tall he was. Stone said, that's pretty close. You know, Stone said, I even hate to say this. He said, I just seen a black cat. With a long black tail. Thank you. Yeah. What do so, you have to say? Yeah, and look, it's just about, it was like 1,001, 1,000. Show me the body. He's gone. <laughs> oh, you'd have been quick. <laughs> he wants to, to see the dead no, no. body. You'd have been quick to even shoot this thing. Every time. Too was, quick. No time. Time. Same thing. In yeah. a curve on the backside of a hill. I go back. Tree. I go back to the picture that I know my <laughs> anything friend. but anything but out in a bald open with oh. time to get a shot off. That I, that never yeah. happens. Yeah. I know unless my friend, it's a cat. My friend took this uh -oh. picture. That's His name is there now. Si, you remember when Bull took the picture of the oh, cat yeah. with the teeth coming no, out no, the no. top? Now that there, <laughs> that was true. Okay. That's a pretty good picture there. Okay, for one reason, you can't see all of it good enough. <laughs> Okay. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm serious. That's, that's a, a cat, good one. though. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one there. Because t- I've seen that one. You that know, one's yeah. been all over the country. Yeah. 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 Somebody say, sent that yeah. in. You yeah. know, it's legitimate when it's in a Facebook group called Country Folks. <laughs> 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 That is a good one there, though. Because uh, it's just enough. Look, and at the risk of offending some of our fans who may be members yeah. of that group, yeah, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, that but, that was a but, good one, though, because it was just dark enough and just, you know, yeah, okay, well, that one. It there. looked awful chocolate, yeah. too. It oh, yeah, looked like yeah. a chocolate cat, yeah. not a black one. Yeah. Jonathan from Slidell <laughs> sent that one in yesterday. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this photo. That is good. Uh, oh, boy. And it, what, that's, if that country folk says that's an Arkansas, I don't, I don't know. South Logan County. I've seen that Arkansas. one been in a couple places. Yeah, oh, that, that one's a good one. They done a good job on that one, <laughs> man. But hey, no, the one that Bull took. Okay, he works on. Uh, uh, you know, it actually blew a transformer, and he pulled it out after they you know, put it out. To That's me. my problem. I've so been fair. looking too low. Oh, no, I no. need to be yeah. looking high. Oh, no, no, no. This Ain't thing, you watching Jungle Book? They're right hey. there next to the pigs that fly. That's oh, no, cool. No, no, no. But, hey, I'm telling you, this thing, if when you looked at it, that joker had teeth like this. He looked like a vampire. You know, <laughs> and he was a bat. You talking about ugly? You talking about ugly? That boy was whooped with an ugly stick plus electrocuted. <laughs> yeah. You know? <clears throat> what? But it, but it was wild. Wait, so it had teeth like a vampire. Are you implying vampires are... Well, no, no. I'm just oh, Well, hey, there, are, there is a uh, vampire bat. <laughs> See? Okay. No, no. I see it. That's the name of it. <laughs> and he's got big teeth, too. Okay. Thank you. Now, whether he's a blood sucker or not, I don't know. <laughs> but, hey, now that I think, yeah, he, is, he is a blood sucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that he thinks about no, it. No, no. Now that I think about it, because it showed him on the on neck of a cow. Uh, Johnny D, run it. <laughs> well, I don't even know what we're talking about. Vampire bat. Hey, sorry, vampire I was bat. looking up the Jungle Book because uh, <laughs> vampire bat. Vampire bat. Vampire bat. I want to see this picture of him hanging blood. off the neck of a cow. Yeah, and he likes blood. I'm, okay. I'm interested in no. hanging off the neck of a cow by a bat. That, <laughs> I find that truly interesting. Oh, it's in the. You truck. never ran across that, Mark? And, hey, while oh. we're in a, a little sidebar, waiting on this. <laughs> Did you see our friend Marty Smith, who was on our podcast, what he did? Guinness World Record holder? Uh-oh. Is that Good a, is that a cow? Uh-oh. That's, that's, that's a pig. That's a pig. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's well, all I got. Cow, pig. And cow. look, he had teeth as big as that thing. Oh, hey. Vampire bats pretty he small, fits dude. securely on the back of the neck of a pig, and he had teeth as big as him. <laughs> <laughs> that teeth be about that big, so. Si. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying, hey. Uh, Vampire uh, bats freak me out. Bats freak me out. Why are we talking uh, about bats? Oh, are they're, wild. they're, they're are. nasty. Okay, it's mm-hmm. dangerous. Yo, know, they got a lot of diseases. The the, na- the rats of the nighttime yeah. sky. That's anyway, that, yeah, because when the the uh, scientists go in to study them, they wear mock mock gear. Okay, they're what's that? Bats? Oh uh, yeah, when yeah. They studies on bats because they are they're nasty. We did some of that mess in college where we like trap bats. Yeah. at night with yeah. a net. Yep. Nope. Nah, man, I don't like. I don't trust them things. Oh, we done it. We done it with a cane pole and a cork on the end of it. No, no, or a bobble. Just with a little piece of white cloth on it, and you just yeah, <laughs> and you whack. You know? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a lot yeah. easier if you put up yeah. a piece of net and let them fly into yeah. it and yeah. drop well, the right. net down. Yeah, to be it was a lot of fun. Y'all are knocking yeah. them out. For knocking good. them out with a cane pole, boys. They eating mosquitoes. You up yeah, there? They just do. Yeah. I got bo- uh, bat boxes at my house. No, but they mean. Oh no! They mean when you get them when you get them untangled out of that net. They mean they bite anything. Oh no! Them. And not only that, they're really uh, unique. It's they cool unique, though. No, no, it's a unique critter. critter. I just don't want one of them on me. Yeah, you because know, they got sonar. Mm-hmm. They they make a little screech, and whatever it bounces off of, that's how they they have to, they catch mosquitoes and stuff. Echolocation. Echolocation. <laughs> No, no, I'm I didn't hear nothing bounce back. No, 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 yeah. I kept going. Ain't no food inside. Ain't no food. Hey, think about the hearing on them things. Oh, yeah, that's make a little screech and it bounces off of a mosquito, and then they got him. Yeah, that's in the dark, man. Yeah, in the dark, no less. The field mouse is fast. No, no, but the that hey, that just <laughs> reminds me saying. PBS again. Uh oh. Oh, no, no. Here we go. Buckle up. Owls. 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 Hey, uh, Ooh, all ooh, different kinds of owls. Ooh. Yo, you got to think about this. They got uh, 
I think three sets of hearing devices in their head. Ears? Yeah. One, you know, and you got to think of this. The snow is two foot deep. There is a field rat or mouse under that two foot snow. This is true. I've seen this. No, no. They, said it's can, true. they know how fast they've got to fly when they hit hit that wow. snow. They got to know how fast they fly and how deep he is, and then they, they get him. Imagine if you was a rat. You up under the snow, no, you're no, like, oh, you're I got under, this. You Thinking got you're two, safe. Yeah, yeah, you got two foot of snow on top of you. You're like, man, let me go get some seeds. It's yeah. a little cold go, out. Yeah. I'll be fine. Ain't no thing. <laughs> Wop. Hmm. And look, they're the only ones that no noise is made when they fly. Stealth. Owls freak me they, out. That's where they come up with the stealth for our, our, our planes was owl. They done hmm. studies on him. He don't make any noise when he's flying. Owl? That's the exact opposite of our owl. No, no. He makes a lot of noise. Well, one of them, one of them is, does not make any noise. He flies through the night silently. Silent killer. Okay, a silent killer. No, owls are cool. Uh, uh, one time I was up in a, a deer stand, and all of a sudden there was an owl about three feet from we me. Got one down there where we don't know where he we came got from. one down there where we duck hunt, one of them barn owls. And a lot of times I'll mess with people and pull up to that barn in oh. the dark and just leave my headlights on. And when they, I say, walk in there and get, get them decoys out of that barn. And when about the time they bust the door of that barn, he come flying out that big white face looking at oh, you. Oh, yeah. Man, you 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 start saying some things then when, if I, you don't know he's there. Me and Stone are deer hunting in my deer stand, okay? And we've got it where we've got slits about this wide. So we're sitting there, you know, any time, and something comes buzzing by right in front of us. And he lands on a big oak tree, a knot on it, and it's an owl. Well, Stone starts making squeaky noises <laughs> with, his, with his mouth. I've got on gloves that are brown. So I get on top of the two before in the slit. That's dumb. No, 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 no. You about to get talons no, injected no, no, into no. you. So I'm doing this and then getting off the get like he's running up and down the board. You know, Stone is videoing this stupid thing because he's sitting over on this knot like this. And when Stone made a little squeaky noise, he done this. And then when I done like this, over on it, that sucker, here he comes. Okay? After your hand? No, no. Here he comes, and Stone fell over backwards. He was doing a video because this thing tried to come in that little bitty slit. Did you move your hand? Oh, did we move? <laughs> Stone fell you over. You big chicken. And I said, tell me you got that on your video. And he said, no, I was just worried about getting out of the way because he had about a two-foot wingspan. And he, I, he was fixing to come in there and get that mouse. Yeah, we I laughed for thirty minutes after that. Uh, Deer hunts over, boys. We done run everything off laughing. <laughs> it was hilarious. Well, let's take another break. We'll be back right after this. Hey, <laughs> do you like greens, JD? Ah, what? Green greens? Yeah. Like getting all my vitamins and minerals from vegetables? Yeah. Eh, it's all. I'm it's not okay. great at it. But I'll tell you what. Been hanging out with Christian Huff. He introduced us this a while back, and. He gave us this drink called Athletic Greens. It is awesome. Hey, it's one scoop in the morning. You shake a bottle up and you drink it. And right there, you get it's it's really cool. You're getting everything you need as far as vitamins, minerals. Look, whenever you take it, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics and adaptogens, and that's just a good way to start your day. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Oh, that's not like it covered it all. That's all the things, <laughs> Si. So it's a really awesome product. Uh, I've been on it ever since I, you know, I ended up in the hospital, decided to, you know, make a few changes, get a little healthier. It's been awesome. And look, if you're on a diet, it's lifestyle friendly. Whatever that diet is, it works for it. Keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free. This this will work for you. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, which is, hey, you like sleeping. Oh, what's how you Imagine how good it. you'd sleep with this. And look, it has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Professional athletes like Christian. I don't know if he's a professional athlete, but he could be because well, the be. dude's yeah, a beast. Yeah, there you go. He takes it. He's got stone on it. I'm on it. It's just a really awesome product. Great way to start your day. And look. Most people start their day with a super expensive cup of coffee. This is cheaper than that. Not It's 
Whatever you're doing, you can add this into the mix. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And hey, look, they're going to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel bags with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash duck. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash duck to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hey, Johnny D, one of them made him squawk back in the day. What happened, Johnny D? Where what was that? That's in my mom's. House. Yeah, there was a hurt owl, and we were gonna go get it and take it to where the rescue the place rescue out there at Wildlife and Fish. Yeah, yeah so they're like, just go throw a blanket over it. Well, that thing was hurt, but he was looking at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we were gonna put a blanket over it. Oh, you know, we got a video of that somewhere, don't somewhere. We? I, I don't hope, know where it is. I hope not. Yeah. And so I go to throw the blanket. Well, the wind, the blanket literally just goes and falls straight down, and I jump back. Ah, <laughs> I, you know, but I we got like, him. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything. I, that was, I got made fun of and then told to go sit on the side and watch. Yeah, and somebody else. Well, we got the we got the cover over him and I picked him up and put him in a dog kennel and took him out there for him to fix his wing. He done broke his wing. One of them big old great horn. Dogs. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's a cool one. I love him thing. Oh no, they scare me. I There's mean, one by my house right now. We hear them at night. Yeah, they're freaky, but I mean they're they're cool animals. I, I like all things. Out. They got a little bitty one, screech owl. Yeah. yeah, little tiny thing. Oh yeah, he lives in wood duck he's a, boxes. He's a yeah, he's about the size of a dove. Mm-hmm. He's, he's smaller than that once you get him in, his, in your yeah. hand. There ain't much meat to it. We, we had I banded uh, a bunch of them. Christine's mom and dad. He would come up. And he had a nest on their porch under. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yeah. He, cool. They're cavity nesters. Oh, no, they like yeah. to get inside of things and yeah. nest. Yeah, he was cool. cool. Little old bitty thing, miniature. Huh. You know? they're yeah, they're cool when, looking though. When we did it, when I did it in college for. Um, Wood duck boxes, they get in them, them screech owls would nest in those duck boxes too. And they, man, they's rough on tree frogs. <laughs> That's all they ate was like green tree frogs. Okay. That, they, cause I guess because they were little and they feed yeah. them to their little ones. Yeah. And I'd go in there, I'd get to know the whole family before they got out of there. But them little rascals mean too now. You, oh, no. He sleep during the day, but you grab him yeah. and wake him up. He, he, yeah, he gets a little know. life about him. Yeah. And then he really don't like it when you put that band on his leg. He's pretty though. Oh, they're pretty cool. Big. Yeah, they make it. There's a red one and a gray one. Yeah, and they're same critter, just different color phases. And man, they're a neat little animal. They are. Ooh. Ooh. Can they turn their head all the way around? They could turn it uncomfortably far. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I don't know that it went all yeah. the way, but that's what I'd always try to grab him behind the head. Next thing you know, he's looking oh, no. at you. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, time yeah. out now. <laughs> don't be doing that. that. Uh, quit that. I'm trying to get away from you, but mm. I don't know just how far range of motion they got, but they can, well, they can go that, further than you like. Yeah, I know that they've got excellent eyesight in the dark, and their 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 hearing system is they rough on ducks out of this world. They eat a lot of ducks. Yeah, <sighs> don't let them fool you. They catch a lot of ducks in them woods. Well, that the big squirrel. great horned one. Uh, yeah, they uh, they hit squirrels bad. Too. Yeah, they they rough on squirrels. Yeah. They're pretty effective predators, is yep. what they are. That's what's cool about that barn owl down there at the camp. You can go down there and pick up his his pellets where he regurgitates all the fur and stuff, and you yep. can go through there and see yep. what he's been eating. <laughs> you ain't ever have to do that in school. Go through <laughs> an owl pellet. Oh no! Well, they didn't have those classes. Uh, uh-uh. At the um, Christian school? No. Oh, That's just for us public At the school. private school, hey, yeah. Of, I would thought of, that must be a college yeah. course. I, no, yeah. we did that. We did that. I did that like three or four different times in school, in well, biology classes. I, I loved it. Not only that, if, if you're gathering, you you know, it's intelligent gathering. Huh. No, I'm serious. Because Phil, we go out to Darbone Lake, you know, and he had 14 holes to bass fish. Well, first thing he'd do when he'd catch one out of, you know, out just out in the water somewhere, he'd take a fillet knife, cut him, slice him, and cut his stomach open. See what he was eating. See what he's been eating. Oh. See what he was eating. I didn't know where we were going with it. Right, no, no. Hey, see what he was eating, and you'd hear that 20-horse monkey crank up, and hey, here we go. He said, I know where a whole bunch of that is. Then we'd come around the bend, shut it off, and then have a cast. I thought he was tying something inside of his stomach, and sending him back out in the water oh, to go no. find the rest of the no. fish. I didn't know no. what you. I no. didn't know where we was going. Find what he's eating on, and then hey, he knew where it was at, and go wear him out, fill a cooler up. There you go. Just a matter of minutes. 
<laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Of minutes. So, so uh, hey, intelligence gathering. Intelligence gathering. Yeah, the only problem is we ain't hunting that owl. Well, uh-uh. well he's hunting everything around him. <laughs> <laughs> that baby there, you know. Whooping him, too. Yeah, yeah, and he, he wins. Yeah, in the end. Yeah, he wins. The he owl wins. wins. Oh. Yeah, no, he's a. You know, they've got some, you know, unreal. Their, their hearing system is three different distinct things that it does. You know, just think about your know, depth of, you know, figuring the depth on like snow and then knowing how fast he's got to fly and hit it to catch him. Hey, but that all started with this one single cell thing that called out the water. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure it did. Sure it did. <laughs> I figure I'd get you fired up on that one. Yeah, that dog won't hunt for it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. So I was helping Phil back in my younger days. I was helping Phil with a with a duck blind, and I we were we were riding by one of his bass holes, and he just wanted to throw a, a lure in there and see if there were any bass there. But the way he did it was unusual to me, because he threw it out there and just reeled it as fast as he could reel it, and I said. That, that's no finesse. That's the way you do it. And he was like, "Yep, every time I throw it out, it's just fast as you can reel it." Have you? Did you ever not? Did well, you, no, no. Why depends. is that? No, no. It's the, it depends on what the bait. That's like the uh, uh, a good crutch, the top water bait that you bring back. It's got the whopper plopper. The yeah. whopper yeah. plopper. Yeah. It, it's in, it's imitating the the bait. Hmm. Okay. I thought it was unusual. I just. I mean, we would. We were, he was looking for a school of fish. Is yeah, what he was maybe doing. so. Back, Trying to get the whole school. And back up. then, reels were slow. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, they ain't like they are now. But then the other times, okay, you've got to throw it, let it go all the way to the bottom, and then just you actually bunny hump it off of the off of the bottom. Just bring it up, let it fall. Oh yeah, let it fall. Bunny hop. And then yeah, and then normally when you bunny hop it, you bring it up, and when it falls, that's when they knock the fire out of it. Hmm. You know. Cause we we did that with bull over there on uh, Jay Fenton's place. It's a lead head, okay, and you actually put your line through the lead head weight in the middle, tie a treble hook on it, and it's got a little spinner on the back of it, a little bitty thing. That costs like twenty five, thirty cents a piece. You know, inexpensive. So if you hang it up, and break it off, hey, put another one on it. He bought a hundred of them. Run it back. <laughs> Y'all, and they will. They'll eat it up. Y'all got any of them? Sure. I don't even know what you said, but <laughs> oh, no. I'll make sure we do. I can't get wing ding, wing ding, or something like that. Oh, uh, all yeah. it is is it's got a little, it's a little lead head, you, and it's got a hole through the middle of the bait, tie a treble hook on, on the bottom of it, and it's got a little spinner. You just throw it out there and let it hit the bottom, and then you just bunny hop it, what I call it. Just pick it up in, you know, like four inches, let it fall, and every time you let it fall, whoa. There you go. And then bring, bring him in. Well, let's bunny hop our way in this next break. We'll be back. Right after. Finesse, the finesse our way. Hey, the Energizer Bunny, boys. Johnny D. No. Okay. What do you mean, no? Oh, yeah, I only bring it up because there's probably somebody listening to this that may be going through the same thing. Uh, or has recently. I did not have a good weekend. Or is preparing to go through the same thing. What? My dog's no longer with us. Uh-oh. Oh, no. That's bad. Dublin passed away. Oh. Yep, that's bad. Yeah, it was a rough weekend. Oh, uh, boy. Well, I thought I was going to be good, too. That's the weirdest part. Uh, oh, man, he's 14 years of your life. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh, my God. So I got oh. him whenever. Jeez, Louise, here we go again. <laughs> um, I got him when I, I was 19 and a half, I guess. Man, you were still yeah. young enough then to count half years. That's yep. good. Yeah. I like that. 19 and a half-ish. And I thought he died about 20 times by now, but he just kept trugging along and kept hanging on, kept hanging on out with all three of our kids. But yeah, on Friday, I had to take him to the vet and it was time. Oh boy. Um, you know, you don't know. It's tough because you don't want your dog to suffer. And Amen I, to that. I didn't know. The vet told me it was the right time, so she made me feel better. That's good. Shout out to the people at the animal hospital right up the road. Um, they did, they were incredible that morning, watching a big dude like me boo over the <laughs> dog. I mean, oh, I was hey. a mess. Hey, and I didn't think I would be because you know, 
How can you not be? I don't know. That dog, right. that dog right. been through every milestone of your I life. I think so. Say, that's, like, that's your childhood buddy there. Yeah, yeah that, there we about. are. Way back when. Yeah. You know, that's I mean, me in Dublin. And then here, here's my, we. I mean, we've been going through the pictures and all that. Look, 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 at, oh, look at those guys. Look at him. Look at little fat Ben's there in the middle. And so the toughest part. And I, I mean, I literally took a day off of work. I was a, I, I knew it would be a sad day. I did not know I was going to be a complete and total disaster of a mess. Um, when the kids got home from school, that's rough. Nobody man. prepares you for that in life. Like yeah. I, I, like, and two years ago he got bit by that raccoon, and I <coughs> thought that was it. Like when I took him to the vet, I was like, I don't like, I don't think he's going to make it. Two years later, here we are. So, like, I kind of had the conversation with them then. About a month ago, we talked about it, and they, like, cried themselves to sleep. So I was like, oh, boy. Um, but they took it all right. I don't know. How old are they again? My eight, what? five, and three. Eight, six, and three. Yeah. I don't even mm. know how old my kids Been are. any questions come up since it happened? Like, any of them forget and then be like, where's Dublin? Or Not really. I keep doing stuff, though, that, like, and I go to, like, like when I got home from church yesterday, I was, I was, I went to let him out, and I was like, mm. "Yeah, let me go." Look. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that, that happens. Me, that reminds me of one bullet, a little cur dog that we had growing up. We're getting on the bus. He <laughs> 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 actually gets run over in front of the bus. Oh. All the kids, Thank all the kids God, on the school bus mm, knew him. So okay, he gets run over with a wagon behind a tractor. What turn did oh. we just take? Well, no, no. I was just going to tell you, hey, and look, by the time we got to school, everybody on the bus is crying, including the bus driver. Mm. And when we go to class, everybody in class is crying because they all knew him. Oh, boy. Okay, so it's a, that's a monumental thing there. Oh, yeah. it is. look. Your oh, there's an attachment to a, a is dog, gone. for sure. Well, yeah, and yeah. They, they don't know life. Yeah. Without, like, that's what, yeah, yeah, I mean, our dog Jude is eight now, so you know in a lab – we're 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 running we're running out yeah. on lab years. Well, I mean, basset hounds are like eleven to twelve, and yeah. like Dublin was like, no, he ate more chocolate, he chewed up more diapers, <laughs> like he did not, he shouldn't have been. And you know, the Lord bless us with a oh, boy. dog that Some had nine lives. Yeah, yeah that's so good. you know, it was tough, and Ben's took it probably the hardest. Uh, I can see that he walked he he because so our dog sits on our back porch, and our house is up off the ground there's like 15 steps down and he just looks over his kingdom of our backyard <laughs> and when i told him ben's like walked over and looked and i lost i was like stay strong stay strong look <laughs> at my wife my wife who you know dog would run his course with her but she like she's boohooing and then this is the line that just the whole house melted down ben's looked at me and goes so we don't have a dog anymore oh. and i was like my wife was like because we were We've known well, it was coming. and so That's we, when you get on that phone quick. Yeah. Say, what kind you want? What are you thinking? We want something that don't shed. We ba want no, Basset Hounds. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad <laughs> you told Hound the kids. Boys. You know what I mean? I'm glad you told them. Oh, no, it was a life lesson. Well, and what's go. funny is, so a lot of our friends are, you know, they're in the same stage of life as us. So, you know, it's a normal thing to get married, get a, which I got a dog. Allison dumped me, so I got a dog named Dublin to cope, and then she came crawling back. Is your next <laughs> one going to be named Belfast? No, no, we're just, no, we're not. I like it. We're I'm holding just off curious, for a while. I'm, I'm just curious if we're going to keep the Irish theme or like. But. So it's only it's pretty fresh, and you know, this morning was tough too. I was like, this is just. Well, I went back to work because well, I knew when you texted me and said, "Hey, do you want us food?" I'm cleaning out all this oh, stuff. You were like, "I got. I don't want to look at this stuff. I don't want to be reminded. Yeah. I need it out." And look, I get it. Yeah, I've been there, done that. It and when tough. ours passes away, that we got Jude. Like two months before we got married, I mean, Jude been there through our whole marriage. Yeah. yeah. Like so, when that happens, oh, like, it's tough. I'm gonna try to hopefully see it coming and have Jude too there about six months before that yeah. happens. See, like, we we decided you know, we're gonna take a little break, for, but then uh, this morning I was, I might have looked at a couple of basset hound puppies. Yeah. <laughs> see, ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, well, let me let me tell you. I'm glad that you told your kids because my parents didn't tell me, me and my brothers, when we were growing up, we had two dogs, Freddis and Creddy. No, Credis and Freddy. There we go. Who named so, them dogs? I was six years old. I don't know who named them. <laughs> All I know is I walked out in the backyard and the dogs were gone. And so my dad was like, yeah, I had to take them to the dog hospital. 
uh, you know. So they were gone a few days. So when we were at church, I think it was a Wednesday night, Sister Sarah said, are there any prayer requests? I said, yeah, Freddie and Credis are in the dog hospital, and I need them back, you know. And so we prayed for the dogs, and then my older brother said, I had to go to Sister Sarah and tell her the dogs were already dead. <laughs> so I didn't find out until later in life, you know, that the dogs, uh-uh, they, they were gone. Oh, I man. wish somebody would have sat down and said, this oh, we, is, these yeah. are life lessons. Listen, you know, first of all, prepare your child for what's fixing to happen. You know, give them a little advance notice and, and yeah. be healthy about it, not just like, well, we, Somebody stole them in the middle of the night. We did that the happened. best we could. And then I buried them right over uh, kind of beside our driveway, which I'm starting to think was a mistake because every time I leave and every time I come home, I'm like, I look over it yeah, but that's where funny. I buried them. And then, but after we told them, we all walked down there. Had a little service. Uh, we just said, uh, oh, yeah. Well, we all balling together. Well, well. Ben's prayed and it was just like, thank you for that. It was, it was. That's it good. sucked. Yeah. But it was a really, you know, 14 years of your life with a dog. I've I've been quoted on this podcast to say dogs aren't in heaven. Wrong. I will say uh, Dublin's got a 50-50 shot because he's going to have to face some judgment for some of the things he did. <laughs> no. Uh, but I hope he's there. Oh, I'll, he is there. And... They made a movie about it for oh, crying out no, loud. Go to heaven. I wish you'd quit denying I that. All right, I'm in. Yeah, and maybe they all go there. Maybe he's hanging out with Sarge, my best town from when I was a baby. So um, you, there you go. There Sarge you go. didn't like me, and I didn't like Sarge, but now that I'm older. But, yeah, it was a tough week. I'm still kind of just blah. Oh, and you still will be. Thanks. If, no, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, just, I mean, that's just part of it. The like, grieving process. It's yeah. going to take you a while to get over it. Absolutely. But he was a cool dog, and... We had a lot of fun together, and he was loud. He probably kept Jeff and Jessica up across the pond for. They're probably wondering what's happening. The one thing I remember about that dog, he had the longest toenails. He was a digger, son. Thick. He could have dug from here to China. Yeah, I mean, like legit. Like he, that boy could dig. He, he could sniff it out too. Yeah. So, and he yeah. whooped that possum that one time it got on our. Oh, he's dog. definition of a hound dog. And that's good for him. He yeah. lived. Hey, he lived a life worthy of a hound dog. So that's good yeah. for him. A lot of naps on that back porch. Yeah. I don't like looking at my back porch right now because he's supposed to be sleeping out there. But hey, get you another one. He'll sleep out there. Oh, we're going to. <laughs> come home. All you got to do is come home with one. I, um, I ain't ready for Dublin. I ain't ready for Dublin. He ain't ready, boy. <laughs> I ain't ready. But one day we probably will be. And What are you going to call him? Like dubs? Like deuce? Well, if it's, well if Dublin was, I might get a girl. Yeah. And that would have been Flo. Uh, I just, I like the name Flo for oh, a dog. Progressive. That's cool. Flo. Man. Well, it was, you know, but Dublin, I don't think there will ever be another Dublin. So. There you go. Hey, Deuce, Dubs, there's all kinds of things. Right. Your wife will come up with something. i probably just let my kids name it, and it'll probably be as weird as Freddie and Creddy. <laughs> I, I, I still don't know what Creddy is. And Coutrons. Well, Dublin. Rest in peace. Our rest in peace. Oh, he's yeah. doing all right. Rest assured, we know where you're at because they up? made a movie about it. <laughs> all dogs <laughs> right. go to heaven. All dogs. That's my story, and heaven. I'm sticking to it. And every oh. cat faces judgment. So. No, well, no, oh, they don't even get that. Oh, get oh, oh, sweet pea, <laughs> sweet pea, you're out, baby. No, I didn't you're say out. he's out. I just said you face judgment. More hey, harsh you got judgment. judgment. He's gonna have you to got, answer more. Yeah, you got judgment coming, sweet pea. Yeah, sweet pea gonna have to answer for that. That. I just want to say before we go to break, though. Go ahead. I didn't cry. Okay. Right. Hey, I'm hey, close, but I'm hey, solid. That's good. good. Hey, it don't matter if you do. Sometimes you just got to get it out of you. Uh, we, hey, we I haven't cried today. That's good. So it's you coming. Will uh, no, I will when I drive home. When I pull in the driveway, <laughs> for sure, I will. Last <laughs> night, my mom, like, we go eat dinner at my mom and dad's house, and I hadn't seen my mom yet. She just comes up and hugs me and kisses me on the cheek, and I just lose it. You my know dad. what? It, yeah. My dad goes, now, why would you do that to the boy? <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> my mom goes, I just know it's tough, and I haven't seen him. Oh, fantastic. Well, look at that. You can always look back at that right there. That's, That's right. a All picture right. that I will always have right there. Guaranteed. That's a good Look one. at that big-headed Ben. good girl. All right, now All right we'll cry. be I'm back right back. after this. <laughs> Johnny D? What do y'all want to talk about? Dog. Whatever's on that. I ain't talking about dog. Cold. What, whatever Martin, you come up with. I right. love my dog. I love that dog. I love all dogs. All right. Yeah. Peyton from Monroe, 
Pikeville, Alabama. Oh, oh. Well, okay. It's, uh, it's, he's from L.A. too, South Al- Lower Alabama. Alabama. All right, so he's got a six-year-old son. He loves hunting, fishing, all the things. Fairly avid outdoorsman. Uh, whenever they get a chance, he wants to be outside. Great thing. He loves hunting. He's just super into it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where it, he's too into it, maybe. Over the last year or two, he has become obsessed with the idea that any wild animal that may cross, it's time to take them out. <laughs> yeah, I like him. Hunting style. So he wants them to be passionate about the outdoors, but he wants, how do we dial back the, if it's brown, it's down, like we're just going to take oh, out the everything. Sun. Yeah, the, the sun. Yeah, the sun. The kid is having that kid. problem. No, not the adult. Not the adult. Uh, no problem. <laughs> not a problem at all. Every kid goes through it. See, I had no idea. About it's this. the it's the steps of an outdoorsman. Okay. You all the, you got these stages. I call it his kids in that bloodlust stage, where all that matters is the kill. <laughs> Nothing else matters right now for whatever reason. I think you see it in like animals that hunt to survive. I mean, I think it's all a process in learning what that is about. He just has to temper it from his side of teaching his son instead of about the hunt and the kill. Let's talk about conservation. Let's talk about why we do these things. Let's talk about, let's change the the narrative from the hunt and the success of the kill to why we're doing what we do. And his kid at six is old enough. Then you start, you start taking him out there looking at trees, looking at grasses, looking at this, looking at that, and start explaining that side. And you'll see this kid. You So you got him hooked. Yeah, well, he's done. Hooked. You got well, him hooked. Well. You did the hard part. You got him hooked on the outdoors in a technology-based time. You've done the hard part. Now let's teach him why those things are there, why we do what we do. It is not simply for a hunt and a kill. It is to provide meat for your family. It is to manage populations to control disease. It is There's a hundred different things of why hunting is conservation and why we fund all the, the dollars that, that allow that to happen. That's the story you have to start telling him now. You, you, got, the har- you got the fun, the adrenaline, that's there. That's a hard thing to get in them. But once that's in them, it don't leave. Now you have to you have to harness that energy into something better, which means taking him on stuff of more than just the hunt. Take him on the work days. Take him on the stuff that is not very fun to do when it comes to hunting. Mm-hmm. And then his kid will be like, oh, I get it now. This whole process makes sense. Imitate the behavior that you want him to see. That's exactly right. If you and your buddies get fired up about it and still are celebrating and trying to stack deer up like cord woods, you're in lower Alabama. I know you ain't duck hunting. So <laughs> I'm assuming that he's got fired up about deer hunting. And I know y'all have very liberal laws in Alabama when it comes to female deer, which you should. You got a bunch of them. Stack deer up yep. like cordwood is a new one, by the way. Well, I mean, I'm just saying that's what that's what happens on them things. When you go to the camp and the camp's got 30 members and everybody killed one, yep. they're stacked up at that skinny shed yep. like cordwood. Yep. And so you have to start. Yeah, I mean, just like Philip said, start start showing start showing a little restraints. No, I tell you what, today we ain't gonna do that. We we're just gonna watch them. And then you just start developing an appreciation for nature in there because the fun is obviously there. I mean, Ben, my buddy Ben's two kids went through it. Like, I, I was like, there ain't going to be a deer left here by the time these boys get done. I mean, it was, they was, fill them tags up, fill them six up. And then we started involving them in the tractor work and the chainsaw and the hanging of the stands. And then all of a sudden it meant more to them. So now when they go, they enjoy the hunt. Like they're, they're there for the full circle. So that's where this kid's at. And and you'll I, be fine. I'll say that, that I've learned something from Cy. Not, I mean, we've hunted a lot together, but... Um, just the respect that he has for animals. Um, when you were hunting in Germany, you used to say that there was a, uh, well, they, they, they honor the game, you know, which I, I, I enjoyed, <clears throat> you know, cause like they give it what they call the last rights. Like when you shoot a deer, okay. You break a, a, a limb with some, you know, acorns on it and put it in his mouth. Well, that's cool. You're honoring yeah. the game that you just harvested. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And and like I tell people all the time, especially animal rights wackos. Okay. <laughs> wackos. Well, no, no. Wackos. I do. Because they, they tell me, why do you shoot that defenseless animal? And I always tell them, hey, you're showing your ignorance. Number one, they're not defenseless. Number two, okay, 
I spend more time watching wildlife mm -hmm. because if if pulling the trigger was all there was to hunting, I'd sell every gun I had and never go again. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Good point. I actually go out and enjoy what God has created, okay, and then actually put us in charge of to take care of them, manage them, okay. You know, and the Bible says it very plainly, okay. You know, rise, kill, and eat. Okay, so I've got orders from headquarters to, hey, kill it and grill it, Jack. <laughs> and matter of fact, I love it. I do the same thing. Every duck I kill that either the dog brings me or I go out there and get it, first thing I do, I pick him up by the foot, every one of them. I grab him by his foot and I just look at him. And I sit there and I wonder, what all have you seen? No, no. What, what I, 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 on your trips to and fro, however old you are, whether yeah, you're six fancy. months old or whether you're, you know, five or six years old, and you only know that if they're banded. But just looking at that, I'm like, Man, what have you encountered along the way no, to, no. To, to the when time you, you got right when you get a band that's 12 years old, this duck you just shot has made 12 migrations. Yeah. Okay, which is pretty amazing. It is. Oh, yeah. Okay, Incredible. he made it all the way from the Canadian prairies 12 times. This time, he messed up. He got in front of you, and yeah. you took him out. Yeah. Yeah. It's just well, a cool thing, but yeah. you but you go through that. There's, I mean, every hunter goes through those stages of of development. I see it every time. Every time you hunt with kids, a lot of time they're in that more, 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 more stage, and then you get to after. You, and it don't really matter the age because you can be a kid at yeah. thirty doing this if mm -hmm. it's new to you. It's more, 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 and then you start. It starts tempering, and the more becomes quality. Then the quality becomes conservation. And next thing you know, you end up sitting at the camp because the weather's not exactly how you wanted it, and you watch stuff fly by, watch deer walk by. You you ain't even mad at them no more. Yeah. That's what I call it. So uh, no, no, you I'll just ain't even mad at them. No, you no. like you look at them and say, you know what? Today I'm good. I, I don't. I'm fine. Goes up there with Red Dog. Mm -hmm. When we're in the lodge, where he's got a big fine spot scope, and there's deer coming out to feed her, and we're watching them. You know, we're watching them through the deer. Talking about, well, that one there is four years old. He's got one more year, and we got to chase him down and pop him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's it's more to it, okay, and and especially if when you get Stone has got me into the management part of deer hunting. Yeah, that's the right. fun part. You no that's, longer that's need actually, instant gratification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more fun to watch, okay? Because last year, okay, we looked at all. Oh, probably 25 eight points yeah okay and then we had a hit list which was great and the best part of it was okay we had 11 deer we wanted to shoot and we killed every one of them but the cool part was everybody in our outfit killed you know we didn't like i didn't kill six Mm -hmm. I killed one deer. I was specifically hunting that one deer. And that's the best part to me. No, no. Pick one and match width yeah. with it. Don't yeah. go don't yeah. go window shopping. And look, it <laughs> it was about seven times before I actually got finally he walked out and I got him. Yeah. Pick okay. you one pick you one and match widths with him. Yeah. yeah. Then when you do that, it's a lot of fun. Oh no. And if you need meat, there's plenty of does that need to be taken well, for the health of the land. No, no, because we just did so. that the other day. What? It was Chad's little girl went with us, Emily, and then BK and me in Stone, and I shot a doe. It's the okay. children and BK inside. shot a doe, and <laughs> Emily, Emily shot a doe. So I got to hunt on Youth Weekend. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Right. He's you still know? 14. There you go. That's mine. Hey, I'm never going old. Well, you want to send us out of here, Johnny? Yeah. Uh, so here's the one my dad sends me a verse every morning, and the day after Dublin passed, this is the one he sent me. So. Psalm 42, 5, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Savior and my God. Even on our toughest days, there's still hope in the Lord, and we always got hope with him. So no matter what you're going through, if it's a dog dying, which on the grand scheme of things can tough in the moment but it's pretty light if it's a family member whatever it is we still have hope in jesus amen and if we're following him this whole life here on this blue and green ball we call earth can be pretty fantastic <laughs> yeah amen. amen and very short That's right. in the grand scheme of what we yep. believe in so 
All right, we'll see y'all next time right here. We're out. <laughs>